Jones, I have some pictures up there. Uh, we got back from camp safely on Friday, and um, I think all seven of the kids had a really good time. Um, some of the pictures you might have seen Alex and Elena dressed up. They did a, um, a musical throughout the week called The Not-So-Terrible Parable, which happened to be about today's gospel, um, The Good Samaritan. And then um, we had five of our kids who did a hiking and caving week. And I mean they hiked. <laughs> Uh, what one day? What did your the girl in the cabin who came up with 15 miles um, on on Tuesday between hiking and walking through the camp and playing some of the games and stuff? Um, and then they spent two days going through caves in southern Indiana. Um, and so I think everybody had a wonderful time, and we thank you again for all your support with it. And, um, and apparently they're really all still worn out because only three of them are here this morning. <laughs> Uh, but it was a very busy weekend, and we had a great time. Um, just a couple of announcements I want to uh, point out. Uh, one, we've been talking about the fact that we were looking for Sunday school teachers, um, and we have them. So we're very thankful for that. Um, Tammy Pollard and Charlie Kitzman have agreed to step up and start teaching um, our youth. So we're very thankful that they're going to do that. Um, we're thankful for Sherry and Debbie and all the years they spent with our kids. Um, so we're very thankful for that. So uh, but if you are considering doing it, we'll still, we'll still take people. <laughs> but we're thankful that we do have the two who um, stepped up to start teaching. Um, and the only other announcement that I want to make is I was going to tell you that Murray came home from the hospital, but Murray came to church this morning. So yay! well enough to not sit in the um, rocking chair, we're going to start raffling off for Sundays for a fundraiser. Five dollars and you can sit in the back of the chair with a footstool for worship. <laughs> so, but anyway, we're so thankful that you're back and, and we're too great. And, um, and we're thankful for everyone who stepped up and brought some meals and helped with the boys. And we still may be um, in need of that, but I will let you know as, as time goes on. Um, are there any other announcements this morning? Thanks for your help on that ram, and I will announce the uh, boy is going to be next week now of when we can pick our ramp up at the white and take it down to Melbourne and get something together down there. But this time you for sure don't have to have any skills. You just have to be able to lift a heavy thing. Um, we had the women's group meeting on last Monday night, and so we did elect new officers for the Welka. So I'm the president, and Catherine Swan is secretary, and Pat Wilkin is treasurer. So we had other people that really So it's great. Thank you.
faith, God forgives us all our sins. As a called ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
first reading today is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 9 through 14. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. When you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Here ends the reading. The psalm today is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10, and we'll read it responsibly by whole verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not in the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly in your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. The second reading today is from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Here in the <coughs> Thank you. 
play against me, what's going to happen is I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question about your person, and then anybody who has that quality, you're going to leave sitting up, and anybody who doesn't, you flip down, right? So, you know, if, if I was to ask about um, hair, right, you might push certain ones down, okay? So you've each got a person that this, this is, this is who I'm, I'm shooting to get, all right? The people are there. So, all right. So does your person have eyes? Okay, so now flip down. Everybody on, this, on that row who doesn't have eyes. Who doesn't have a nose? I'm not doing very good here. All right. Um, does your person have shoulders? No. Oh, okay. All right. So I got to know. Okay. So now you flip down everybody who does have shoulders. Oh, golly. Um, oh, I, oh, does your person have lips? Yes. All right, so flip down everybody who doesn't have lips. Oh, that's not going very well, is it? <laughs> I have to be a little more specific than that, don't I? That's kind of part of the game. If I ask something instead like, does your person have red hair? then you could flip down things off and on, right? Well, the reason I played it that way is because that's kind of how the gospel goes today. There's a person who goes to Jesus and asks a question. And the question is, who is my neighbor? Right, and I think the person that's asking Jesus wants Jesus to say, well, your neighbor is the person who um, believes the same things you do. Or Or your neighbor is the person who looks like you or talks like you. Right? And Jesus isn't playing that game. He tells a story instead that we know as a story about a man on the side of the road and three people come and two help, or sorry, two ignore him and one helps. And he says, the one who helped him, right, showed him mercy realized that even though they were different, they were neighbors, right? So Jesus was saying, you want to know who your neighbor is? All of those people. We don't go and say, no, 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 right? We don't judge who our neighbor is based on their hair color or if they wear glasses or if their skin is a different color or if their faith is a different faith or any of those things. Is our neighbor and we should always pay attention to them always keep them up and in our minds treat them with love and mercy and respect right so it's a really hard game of guess who when everybody is the who and they are all worthy right so let's have a prayer there you go okay. let's have a prayer gracious God we are thankful that you tell us everyone is our neighbor. Because even though they may be far away, we are far away to them. And they still would love us. We think that you taught us how to be there for one another. How to look at people and say, I love you no matter what. And we ask that you help us when we don't say that and don't realize that. We thank you for the gift of your love for all people. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up.
Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of our Lord. Are you good or bad? This lesson showed up this week at camp. It had been a rather rocky morning between some of the campers and the staff on that Wednesday. I was asked to do chapel that day, and so I begged the question of everybody there, are you good or are you bad? Oh, you should have seen the looks on some of the faces. <laughs> right, but it's, it's an important question to ask ourselves. Are you good? Or are you bad? I'm guessing most of us on any given day would say, pretty good. I obey the laws. I come to church and worship. I try to do good things. I try to be kind to people. I would say I'm good. But are you always? Right? That's the problem with the word or. It doesn't leave us much room to work with. Good or bad. They are opposed from each other. It's one of the things I don't like about the way this parable is set up. Because most of us know this parable from early on. We get this one in Sunday school and vacation Bible school. And in our Bibles and in our brains, it is given a title. What is the story for today? The Good Samaritan. Awesome. He is. He does good things. He is the Good Samaritan. But the question is, if he is the Good Samaritan, what are the priests and the Levite? The bad priest. The bad Levite. And frankly, as someone who has grown up in the church and knows a lot of the rules and traditions of the church and who chose to be a leader in the church, I don't like to think of the priest as being bad. <laughs> But I have to ask myself, what would I do in that situation? Because I think what's important to note is not that the priest is bad. He makes a bad choice. But he makes it for a very good reason. At that time, there were laws within the church that dealt with how clean you were, how holy you were, how able you were to lead worship. And the priest in that moment knows that if he stops and touches 
somebody who is bloody and beaten. He has to make amends for that. Blood is unclean. It is dangerous. It is dirty. It is unhealthy. So therefore, he then has to figure out, what did I do? What do I have to do to make up for it, including sacrifices of various animals and length of days? So if I just didn't show up one Sunday morning and said, sorry, I won't be here for a good week or two because I touched somebody and now I have to make amends for that, you're on your own. Is that good or bad? The priest made the wrong decision, but he made it for what he thought were good reasons. It would have essentially ruined his life for probably a week or two, inconvenienced his worshiping community, right? One versus many. It's a debate we've all had to have. So does that make him good or bad? Same thing with the Levite. The Levite made the wrong choice, but his brain is built for the law. How do we obey the law? And frankly, part of what the law says is, if you're dumb enough to walk by yourself on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho, where robbers lurk around every corner, you didn't learn very well. And maybe, just maybe, you deserved that. It's not the right decision. But for him, it is good reason. This is how the law works, and I follow the law. So is he good or is he bad? And of course, we all champion the Samaritan, right? He is the one who shows mercy. mercy. The the Israelite walking on the road to Jericho, he and the Samaritan in, in normal everyday life would have nothing to say to one another. They both believed in God, But one went one way and one went the other way, and neither the two shall meet. But what he sees is the broken, bleeding man in need of love and mercy. And he acts. Does that make him good for his entire life? Will he be that way with every Israelite he crosses on the street when they're not broken and bleeding? I doubt it. He was good in that moment, but did it make him perfect? Are we good or bad? And what does that mean to be one or the other, right? What do we say, good or bad, saint or sinner, lost or found, true or false? And suddenly we play the game of, hmm, I'm a little closer on the good side. And you may be a little bit closer on the bad side, so neither the two shall meet. It's so easy for us, especially those of us who have been raised in the church, to say, we know what God would have us do. Right? God tells us this, and we've been taught by the church, and our tradition demands this, and sometimes we lose our way and don't see the broken and the bleeding. Because, well... You know, we may help them, but they'd never come through our doors. They'd never put money in the offering plate. We may never see them again, and who knows what they're like in their real life. We get lost in that as well. And the laws. How many of you would say that you are law-abiding citizens? I mean, maybe minus the speed limit. (laughs) Right? Or a few little things here and there. But when does the law go wrong? When is it against love and mercy? Because believe it or not, there are many a times it is against love and mercy. So do we cross to the other side of the road and leave the broken and bleeding behind? And yes, heaven knows a lot of us make really good decisions on a regular basis and we try to be loving and we try to be merciful, but does that mean we always do it? Believe me, I've had those thoughts when I'm in Champagne with the kids and there's somebody in the parking lot with the sign that says, I need help. What goes through your brain? I bet you're there because you deserve it. I bet you're lying. I bet I really can't do enough to help you. So we cross to the other side. We've all done it. 
We are more than good or bad. We are good and bad. Right? That, to me, is the beauty of the Lutheran church, is that at least we admit it. We are more than one or the other. We are the and. We are good and bad. Right and wrong. Lost and found. True and false. And I think when we say that, we hear a different side to the story of the Good Samaritan. We hear Jesus saying, I know who you are. I know that you are the priest and the Levite and the Samaritan, and I know especially that you are often the broken and bleeding person by the side of the road, begging for someone to notice. And then where does that leave us? It leaves us being okay, or at least allowing ourselves to have mercy on those times that we mess up. And it leaves us in the hands of Jesus, whose first comments to the lawyer were, what do you know about scripture? You want to know how to inherit eternal life. What do you know? And what does the lawyer answer? Remember one of the first words he says? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and your neighbor as yourself. That's the message of the parable. Love the Lord. Love your neighbor. That's the first and only true thing about all of scripture is that love is never the wrong choice. If you're given any situation and you're going, I don't know what to do there, what is love in that situation? It's not always what you think it might be. And sometimes it's messy and dirty and leaves us in a place we don't necessarily want to be. But it's never the wrong choice. And when we are the one who crosses to the other side of the road, when we are the one broken and bleeding, Jesus says, I am the one who is there to show mercy and love. Because heaven knows we do not always love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength. Life gets in the way. And we struggle more and more with loving our neighbor because who is our neighbor? Our neighbor is the one locked in a detention center on the border. Our neighbor is the one whose sexuality or race we may have issues with. Our neighbor is the one down the street who only just moved in six months ago and their yard is atrocious. Our neighbor is the one we've known our whole life. And we struggle to love them. But Jesus tells us, I don't struggle to love anyone. I will love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and I will love you even more than I love myself. The parable tells us that in the and, where we struggle, where we're not sure who we are at all times, and we know that we are the ones who walk by far too often, Jesus is the one who never will. For him, love is not the better choice. It's the only choice. His question is never, do I love you or? It is always, I love you and I will be with you. I will walk beside you. You are everything. Love is never the wrong choice. And we can give love because we have so deeply received it. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And when you can't, let God give you his love and mercy because we need it too. Amen.
Now I invite you to stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again. Now the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace be with you. We're glad to see you here tonight.
Now join in our voices with God's people around the world. Let us offer our prayers for all those in need. We pray for the church, steadfast and faithful in its mission to proclaim redemption through Jesus Christ. For all ministers of the gospel who proclaim that the word is near. Let us pray, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for areas affected by drought or storm, for livestock and fields, for ranchers and farmers, and for all who steward the earth, that as God's goodness is revealed in creation, that we act with justice toward all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for lawyers and advocates, for local, regional, and national government, for peace throughout the world, that God would send gracious and upright leaders to govern with mercy and love and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who feel ashamed, for those who find it difficult to trust, for those who feel beaten and bloody by the side of the road, for the bereaved and for the ill, that God provide compassionate and loving caregivers to all who suffer. We pray especially this morning for Martin and Irene, Dixie, Lee, Julia, Marilyn, Don, Melissa, Tim, Pat, Pauline, Steve, Pam, Marcia, Brayden, Susan, Irma, Doug, John, Mandy, Vicki, Brenda, Murray, Joanne, and all those who rest in our hearts and our minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our ancestors who have inspired us by their lives of faith that thankful for their witness, we can confidently proclaim our salvation and our hope in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you hear the prayers of your people before they are even spoken. We commend these and all our prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you always his peace. Amen.